Hello and welcome to another Pulse Fire Gaming video. Today we are taking a look at a new release from Irrational Designs penned by uh, Charles Oynas himself, the Centuri fleet. Now this fleet might actually look familiar. There is some definite uh, homages to other design language when it comes to sci-fi ships, but this is kind of its own little thing. So. Let's get off real quick. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the uh, designer and then we'll talk about uh, the ships themselves. So Rational Designs for years has uh, sold physical models through Shapeways, Studio Bergstrom. Very recently they opened up a Gumroad store, which is C-O-I-N-E-S 23 at Gumroad or, or dot gumroad.com. And these ships are a design that he put out very recently based on some user feedback. Uh, these sell for $15 currently on his uh, Gumroad store. These models specifically are scaled to 2.7 times. So when you buy the files, they're actually much smaller than this. I believe the, the heavy cruiser is I think 54 millimeters and here it is 150. So they're, we made them big so they would match all the other stuff that's on our uh, ships. So let's do as we always do. Let's look at the starships. First, we're going to go the smallest to largest. So we're going to get all these boys out of the way. And we're going to talk about the scouts. Now the scouts, these definitely have a Babylon 5e kind of feel to them. All these ships do. But they also, if you look at the ships, and you'll see it more in the other ships that we look at, these ships have a very like like Centauri from Babylon 5, but they also have like a Tau from uh, from Warhammer 40,000 feel to them. It's interesting. So here's the base model. Uh, we've added our uh, uh, Star Wars Armada style uh, keyhole to it. We went and made the barrels just a little protrudy uh, so that they showed up a little better. Uh, we did that in Mesh Mixer, it took us like a second. One thing that, since we supported all these files ourselves, uh, one thing that we needed to do a better job of was support the engine housings. So, and you'll see better housings on other ships, but you can see that these ones are kinda, they're kinda shallow. Uh, we have the painted one, and I think we're gonna stick with this paint idea for the rest of our ships as we paint them. This was painted with uh, Pro Acryls Transparent Purple, and then uh, Games Workshop Retributor Armor, Rune Lord, Bla Rune Lord Blast, blah, 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 blah. Rune Lord Brass, uh, some gunmetal, and then we added some uh, translucent blue uh, for the engine glow. It's not a perfect paint job, but uh, it's really quick. I, this took us like, I think, 20 minutes to put together, uh, not, not including drying time. So I think this is really, this is probably where we're going to end up going because as the quote goes, in purple, I'm stunning. Okay, so that is the scout. Now we're going to look at the destroyer. The destroyer very much has uh, some established um, design language in it. You can see that the, uh, all of everything that's in the scout is there and then you see other uh, nicer things. The panels are nice on here. Painting uh, with with the simplicity of the ship, considering how small they are on their original scale, painting these would be very simple uh, and they would come out good. On this one, you can see we did recess, uh, using Mesh Mixer, we did recess the engine uh, ports a little bit. And because these were properly supported, we got good cowls around the engines, I guess is what you would call them. So that is the destroyer. Uh, not my favorite ship of the bunch, but it still fits well within the the design aesthetic of the fleet. Uh, now we're going to go with the light cruiser. The light cruiser has a very Manta or Stingray feel to it. Uh, and then uh, this is the first one that we see that's got the uh, port in the front. I would assume that this port on my uh, tabletop would be for, I don't know, a hangar? Uh, or maybe a massive weapon in front. Uh, this ship we pin it, we hollowed, but there wasn't very much too hollow, so it's it's we just put the one drain hole in here. Very nice looking ship. I look forward to painting this 
let me actually have this in frame a little bit, uh, to, I look forward to painting this because it's a fun chip. You start to see, you know, all the design elements are here. We have the familiar guns. We have the, the, uh, the wings or the fins, but they're more blunt. So they look a little more, uh, aquatic, I guess. And then the tail is very nice. I like the ship a lot. They did a good job designing it. Next. Now this ship, I think, is like the perfect marriage. If you are going to compare this to the Tau and you're going to compare this to the Centauri, this is like the perfect marriage of a Primus battle cruiser and like a Tau Manta or another fleet ship. I'm not familiar with all the names of their fleet ships. It's a gorgeous ship. This was printed in one piece. It's 150 millimeters in the scale that we have. And I love it. It's great. It's perfect. Can't wait to print this up. I think as far as printing more of these ships goes, for me, uh, this ship would probably be the biggest ship that we would see more than one of. Or the... I'll, I'll explain it in a second. But I like it. I like it a lot. This was, These were all primed with Krylons all in one. Uh, I think... Uh, what do they call it? River rock. And then we did some matte uh, varnish on it because it's it's taken a while for uh, our uh, spray paint in this human environment to get less tacky. Now, we have the big kahuna, the big mama, the battleship. Now we did the same thing as we did with everything else. Uh, made the, the recesses deeper, made the guns longer, one thing that it is interesting on uh, the bigger ships is they all have rear firing weapons. Like this one's got two chase uh, guns. This one has two chase guns. This one has, I think, six. Let's see here. One, two, three, four. Yeah, five, six chase guns on it. This is 220 millimeters. Uh, we printed this in two pieces and we kind of made a mistake when we were curing it. We set it face down when it cured. So any extra resin that seeped out made it so that these weren't a perfect mate. If we had set these like nose down when we were carrying them, it would have been perfect. So that's that's the excuse for why the center doesn't look great. But at 220 millimeters, I don't think I would have more than one of these on a table, so I wouldn't print out more than one. But you see all of the design elements from all the previous ships are here. They all look really good. And I think these ships in total are excellent. They're an excellent showcase of uh, irrational designs. We're happy to print them. The only con that I really have, I mean, there, there are things that are nice to have when buying 3D models. Uh, things like uh, pre-supports or uh, like pre-hollowed models or pre-posed -pre models or something like that. With this, considering that we've rescaled these and modified them yeah, considerably, I think that's not such a such a con. It's just it would be nice to have. The ships are fifteen dollars uh, on the Gumroad shop, so that makes them three dollars per model, and uh, I think that's about the limit as what I would spend on a, a ship. Uh, otherwise, uh, the ships are great. The designer is doing real good. He's saying that he's gonna he has another. Babylon 5 inspired uh, group of ships that he's going to produce soon and those are going to be really exciting. Thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, if you like the videos that you're watching, feel free to like them uh, so that YouTube knows that you're there and you're actually engaged. Comment if you have something to say about the videos. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good day.